Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and it's my pleasure to give you your first look at Adobe Photoshop Mix, a brand new free application for the iPad from Adobe. So here I've launched Adobe Photoshop Mix and what I'd love to do is show you how to get started. The first thing is that you, well, you, you're going to want a photo to work on and that's where Photoshop Mix really shines. Over on the left hand side I can tap the plus sign and I can grab photos from just about everywhere. I can grab them from the device. So if there's something on my camera roll, one of my albums, I can drill down, go find that photo and start working on it in Photoshop Mix. Of course, I can take a picture. So if your device, your iPad has a camera, which if you're using an iPad that can run Photoshop Mix, it has a camera. And you can take a picture and start editing that picture right away. But if you're a Creative Cloud member, you have access to your Creative Cloud folders. So you can go grab any image you want and start working on it directly from the cloud, pull it down into your iPad, work on it, and then save it to your iPad or send it back to Creative Cloud. And if you're a Lightroom mobile user, I've got access to all my Lightroom photos. So or the ones I've synced to Lightroom mobile, I can access those and work on them right in Photoshop Mix. And last but not least, if you've ever put anything on Facebook, you've got access to all your Facebook photos, whether you put them directly on Facebook or even sent them there from Instagram. So everything you pretty much have is editable inside Photoshop Mix. So let's go to my Lightroom folder. Let's start there. I've got an on the go folder and these are photos I've taken with the iPhone's camera. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this flower picture, pull it right down from Lightroom Mobile, right into Photoshop Mix. Now, the first thing I want to do is just talk about simple enhancements. Everyone likes to do simple enhancements to their photos, and you can do that right here. So you got the basics. You can adjust the exposure, and I'm just doing this with my finger, sliding my finger left and right to adjust the exposure of the photo. If I think it needs uh, to be brighter, drag it to the right, darker to the left. Contrast, same thing. I can bump up the contrast of that photo, clarity, and saturation. You kind of get the idea. And these are all non-destructive. You can go back and re-edit these looks anytime you want, or these enhancements. Uh, speaking of looks, that's the next thing. And looks can be applied uh, either directly to a photo or selectively. So let's go to our looks. And we have normal, natural, portrait, bright and vivid, so forth and so on. So let's say that I want everything but the photo but the flower to be um i don't know let's see what we got here vintage i want everything but the flower to be vintage and you can see i can just keep sliding and going more and more and more well if i go to vintage that's going to make everything vintage because that's what it does it applies it to everything right away but if you want to be selective, you can go in and apply it just to the area you want. Now, I want the background to be vintage. I want the flower to remain yellow. And sometimes it's easier to work with whatever's easiest to select. In this case, the flower is easier to select than the background is. So why don't I start with that? Now, it looks like you're doing the opposite, Terry. You're applying the, you know, the vintage to the flower. That's not what you said. That's okay. Let me finish. Because I said this is easier to select. As you can see, I can do this very quickly. And now that I've done that, you notice at the bottom there's an invert button. So I just tap invert, and now it's done it to the opposite. If I missed a spot, I can add or subtract uh, spots that I've missed or made a mistake on. So I don't want the leaves, just the flower itself. And of course, I can pinch and zoom and go in and work with finer detail. And there's my look. And again, all non-destructive. And of course, uh, if I tap OK on that, I've got the ability to do a crop. So if I just want to crop that to a specific aspect ratio, I can, or I can just bring it up a little bit and crop it from the bottom. And again, all non-destructive, the entire flower is there. Now, once I'm done, I can tap the share button. I can save it to Photoshop, save it to the camera roll, send it to Behance to get feedback, or use the iOS uh, sharing options. But let's go back. Now that that composite is there, we can, or that uh, new composition is there, we can continue working. Now what I'd love to do is something, I don't know, a little bit more fun. Let's go in and let's go to our Creative Cloud folder and let's go to my demo folder here where I've got some images for Photoshop Mix. Now this is where the power of Photoshop Mix comes in. And this is where we're able to do something we've never been able to do before on the iPad. Now, of course, we got the power of Photoshop on our desktop with tons of memory, hard drive space, fast processors, multiple processors, 
fast, triple, quadruple GPUs, everything you were working on in your desktop. But your iPad only has so much RAM, so much storage, so much horsepower. Your tablet is nowhere near as fast as your computer. Nowhere near as powerful yet. So, in this case, I want to run functions that I just weren't able to do before on the iPad. So let's bring in, let's open up this building from Creative Cloud. Let's go ahead and download it. Here's the building. And as you can see, the building looks like it's leaning a little to the right. Well, if I were in Photoshop, I'd run upright. That's a lot of, that's a processor intensive function. Can't do that on the iPad. Never had upright before on the iPad. And I still don't, but I have access to it. Let's go to more edits. And the three edits below, upright, shake reduction, and content aware fill are cloud-based. Even if you are not a Creative Cloud member, you still have access to these functions. So if I go in and I say, run upright on this, what it will do is it will send the photo up to Creative Cloud, where Photoshop servers are running that will process the image and bring back several results for me to choose from. So in other words, it doesn't know which one I'm gonna like, it's a computer. So it's saying, I'm gonna give you three choices, pick whichever one you want. So it starts with the original so I can compare. Here's choice number one, choice number two, choice number three. And I either like number one or three I'm satisfied with. Let me go back to one. Yeah, one's a little bit better. So that's the one I want. Go ahead and tap OK on that. And now, of course, I can crop it to my heart's content and get it to look just the way I want it to look. So there we are. Upright, run from Creative Cloud. Send the, send the photo up there, get the results back, and I'm done. I'm, I'm on my iPad, back with the finished photo. I can do whatever I want with it from that point on. All right, let's try another one. Let's add another one here. And again, let's get this one from my Creative Cloud folder, from my demo folder, my Photoshop Mix folder, and let's talk about, uh, let's talk about shake reduction. So let's see if I've got a good one here. The banjo, we've never done this one before. Let's go ahead and open it up. And this is where you've got camera shake, where the camera or you, the photographer, shook a little and you got that blur from camera shake. All right, let's go ahead and uh, bring that down. And now let's go ahead and send this up for more edits to shake reduction. So again, uploading that asset with everything you've done to it, as is, up to Creative Cloud, where it will then process it in the cloud running with the Photoshop servers that are running up there and then bring the result back down to your iPad. Now, everything can be done on the iPad without being connected to the internet except these three processes. Since they're cloud enabled, you have to be able to be on the internet to send your file up and get it back. But everything else I did, the looks, the cropping, all that stuff can be done offline. Okay, so it's rendering the shake reduction. We're just waiting for the final result to come back. And then once that final result comes back, we'll have our, our choices for the shake reduction. So we'll wait a few seconds here. And here it is. So now again, I've got the before. There's number one, two, or three. I think number two is the sharpest. I'll probably stick with number two. And there we are, shake reduction run in Creative Cloud, very processor intensive uh, feature, back down to my iPad with this image. All right, last but not least, let's do one more of these. Let's go in, grab another file from Creative Cloud. Again, these pictures can be coming from anywhere, but I've got the one stored on Creative Cloud so I can access them from any device. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the, uh, let's grab this one. This one's kind of fun. We got some folks hiking there and, uh, it looks like the sun's going down, and you know what? The guy in front's no longer our friend. We don't want him in the picture anymore. Or, you know, he just doesn't want to be photographed. So, we want to get rid of the leader. <laughs> now, of course, or maybe the straggler, either one. But in this case, that would be a job for content-aware fill if I were on, my, on Photoshop on my computer. Well, I've got access to it here. So, I'll bring up content-aware fill, and it's going to ask me to pick what I want to get rid of. And I'm just going to use my finger and paint in just around this guy right here. That's it. Tap OK. And now uploading that asset. And again, it will do the processing in Creative Cloud and bring down the result back to my iPad. And once I got the result, that's it. He's gone. Done. 
Back on my iPad, again, three processes that were impossible to do on the iPad before, now possible on the iPad with Photoshop Mix. Okay, so those three were cloud enabled. Let's do one more that's not cloud enabled. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a picture. This time I'm gonna get one from Lightroom and I'm gonna get one of my Antelope Canyon shots. We'll bring that one in. And now you notice at the top, the, there's an icon on the left where the picture loaded in and then there's one more. That's another layer. You got two layers available in Photoshop Mix. So I go ahead and tap the other layer and say where do I want to bring my other photo in from. So the first one came from Lightroom. The second one I'll get from Creative Cloud or the iPad or the camera, anywhere you want. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and bring in one more. We're going to bring in a stock image from iStock Photo. Now that composited, they put that stock image right on top of the background and obviously we don't see the background anymore. So it'd be nice if we could maybe see the background a little bit better. Now I'm going to go ahead and pinch and zoom, kind of bring the lion down a little bit in size. So you can see there's the layer back there, but I want to get rid of the background that's currently on the lion. And again, this would be a task, refine edge, Photoshop, so forth and so on. But I'm going to tap cut out. And now just using my finger, I'm going to tell it what I want to keep. So I want to keep the lion. So just kind of paint over the lion. It's kind of using like a quick select technology um, from Photoshop. Make sure I get the ear, get a lot of the mane up there on top. And oh my God, this is fur, this is hair. This is a pain in the butt, as you know, for doing these type of selections. Now, of course, we're using our finger, so we're not, we can't be as precise as we could with a stylus or a mouse or whatever, but there it is. It, it did a selection, not a, Great selection, but it did do one. I can keep going. Now, see that far, that time I got a little too close to the edge and it grabbed all the rest of the edge. So I just go ahead and simply switch to subtract and subtract out that edge. And maybe this is easier because that way I can get right to the edge of the main and subtract it out. Now, again, not a great perfect selection just yet, but there's feathering. I can use edge feathering to kind of bring back in a little bit more of that edge to make that look a little bit more realistic. So there's our lion sitting in the background, again, done with my finger in a matter of a minute, a few seconds or so with that composite. And if I'm still not happy with it, I still wanna do some more to it, I can. So I can go ahead and uh, dismiss cutout, get right back to my layers. I can go to that first layer. I can go to the enhance, for example. I can bring up the saturation of that layer just a little bit to kind of blend it in more with the background. But if I'm still not happy, I still want to do more with it, no problem. I can go ahead and share this, save it to Photoshop. What that's doing is creating a PSD of the layered file, complete with the mask and all, saving it up to Creative Cloud, where I will then be able to access it with the full version of Photoshop on my desktop to do more with it, complete with the layers and the mask and everything. So once that save is done, it will appear and sync in Creative Cloud, and I'll have access to it in Photoshop on the desktop. Now that it's been stored in Creative Cloud, we'll tap OK. We'll head to Photoshop. There it is. It shows that the composition has been added here on the desktop. I'll just go ahead and tap that um, particular menu. Here it is. It uploaded it just now. We'll go ahead and double click on it. It opens it in Photoshop complete with the layers, complete with the mask intact. I can then go in, for example, I kind of see something I want to fix there in the background already. Let's go in and grab our, con our spot healing brush, it's kind of a mark there on, a, on the background, and maybe a little mark there. And I can then go in and mask this a little bit better using better tools that I have on the desktop as needed. So if I want to go ahead and, oops, Cancel that so, and swipe these two. And then I can go ahead and mask this a little bit better. Getting a little tighter around the edge here where I want a nice hard edge around that, that nose. And of course I can go get in and feather around the pixels. And I have my PSD. Save it back to Creative Cloud. Access it back on Photoshop Mix because the two are talking to each other. So that's a quick look at Photoshop Mix, a brand new iPad application from Adobe. And best of all, it's free. Even if you're not a Creative Cloud member, go download Photoshop Mix. 
give it a try. Play with it. All right, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.